What coding language is the best one for you to start with? Where do you begin? What languages do you learn first? I can clear all that up for you, just keep watching. Hello everyone. I hope you're all doing very well during this very difficult time where we're all in lockdown. And I hope you're using this time to brush up on your coding or to find out about coding. And if that is true, that's why you're here, because you've clicked on this video, perhaps because you're interested in becoming a coder, or maybe you're just interested in coding. You wanna know how to get started. You wanna know um, what to do. And some of the most common questions are, um, what, what programming language should I learn? That's the one that I get asked the most. What should I learn first? Well, that one's not so easy to answer because you need to learn a whole bunch of programming languages. So you've got to look at how the internet works. So you've got client side where um, your browser is interpreting stuff so that you can see it. You have the server side, which is where the actual website is being stored and where some of the processing is going on, like the databases and so forth, business logic, and you might have different tiers. But we don't need to go into, in, into that in too much detail right now. Just understand that there's coding languages for that and there's coding languages for the client side. So, your browser understands HTML. So HTML is going to be something, a good place to start. You can't really call it a programming language, but it's hypertext markup language. That's what it stands for. And you use it to create a skeleton, or um, you could call it like, yeah, you are a skeleton. You use it, use it to, to create some sort of scaffolding. You can, you can create a website with HTML. But it's going to be very bland. It's not going to look very nice and it's going to have no functionality. So in order to make it look a bit nicer, you use CSS. To give it some functionality, you're going to use JavaScript. You know, um, these are just examples. You could use something else. But like, you know, it, it, it's pretty much going to be HTML, CSS and JavaScript. On the server side, then you're going to have things like uh, a Python, PHP, um, Java, um, databases, you could be using uh, things like SQL, um, or you could be using uh, um, something that's like a MongoDB, which would be a non-SQL database. And again, I don't want to get too much into that side of things. Uh, I, I want... Um, you to get the idea that you need to learn a, a, a few different types of coding languages and they're not all the same. So you've got um, HTML, which I've already started to talk about, where you have tags. You have tags, you have header tags and you have opening tags and closing tags and some of them just have a tag and they don't really have a closing tag. Um, the important thing to remember is that these tags can have attributes and these attributes can have values. So for example, you might have a div tag, which is short for divider. You have um, one of those tags and you have an, you give it an ID. You can give it an ID or a class, but if you give it an ID, let's talk about an ID. You give it an ID equal to my, my divider. Now, um, you can use CSS to locate that and give it some extra, extra styling. You would use CSS for styling. You can put the styling directly into the HTML, but, um, well, it's best to kind of put it all in one, in one file, the CSS in one file and the HTML in another file. You would just, uh, add, like you might you might add some styling in if, if you're just creating something to make it work and then pass it on to somebody else and they do the styling. Mm. So anyway, um, you can also use these attributes uh, uh, in conjunction with JavaScript. Now JavaScript is going to give your website a whole lot more functionality. So you're pushing on a button 
There's probably JavaScript behind that, making that button work. It's going to collect information. It's going to find out whether there's been a click event and it's or it's going to be invoked by a click and it's going to run some functions. So the, the JavaScript um, has functions in and can be object orientated, although it is an event, a heavily event driven language. So you have some event happen on the, on the, the web page, like it loads, people scrolling down, they're clicking on a button, they're entering into a text field. The JavaScript is going to take that information and do something with it. So um, it's going to have functions. Uh, those functions might be receiving variables. So variables might be passed into the function. And that variable is then uh, and processed in some way and some answer or result or consequence is invoked. Something happens, it makes something happen. Something goes in and something happens. You know, an easiest way to explain it would to say is that some variables go in, some values go in, some process happens to those values, and then some result is spat out. But you wouldn't always get a return. You wouldn't always have like something, something happening. Um, it, these functions, they can use things like if statements, for loops, um, in order to make, make something happen. And, and that, that's the same thing goes for things like uh, uh, Python. <laughs> Python and Java would, uh, their functions would operate in the same kind of way. <laughs> Information goes in or they're called to do an action. Now, I'm explaining it in very simple terms. You know, otherwise we could be here all day if I was to talk about every single thing about it. So I've mentioned variables, so I should really explain what they are. You, you can have variables and constants. Now a constant is going to stay the same all the way through the program while it's running. Whereas a variable, that can change within a program while it is running. So its value can be set to new values and then passed around, which could be really very handy at times. Programming, making lists, arrays, and then being able to find things in those lists and arrays and then uh, being able to perform operations on them. Um, you might need to just count through them um, and then go back all of the way through. So if you've, you've got like, you know, buttons to go this way and another one to go that way, and you're looking through like, you know, some pictures, it needs to know when it gets to the end of that list and it needs to know if you're going back the other way. <laughs> and, you know, you, you would use, uh, again, you would use like JavaScript to, to do that kind of thing. You could do that with like Python. You could do that with uh, with Java. But if you're building a, a, a web app, then you would likely use JavaScript. You, you could use something else. It depends on the company that you're working for. But uh, we will be using HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And in other videos, I'll be going over Python and Java, and we will have a look at, at a few coding design principles as well. And I'm not going to go into those right now because I just want to introduce you to this world of coding and answer a few questions. <laughs> so I've already spoken about quite a bit. Let's just get the drink here. So in, in order to answer that, that first question, so to answer that first question is there's going to be a bunch of languages that you're you're going to start to learn. And the thing is, don't try to learn every single thing about one language because you will get nowhere. What you need to do is just learn what you need to know and then move on to the next part and make sure that all of these technologies work together. Make sure that the HTML and the CSS work together. Make sure that the HTML and the JavaScript work together. Make sure that, you know, if you're communicating with a database, that that all works, that it all works together. And that, that's, that's really what matters. It's not about knowing every single thing about a coding language. It's about being able to take pieces of code and change them 
and make them work in your piece of work. Mm. Because often you will find that there are already pieces of code that are out there that you can use. You might have to look on attributions and so so forth um, before you go nicking people's pieces of code because they might not be happy about you taking their intellectual property without them asking, without you asking them. But you know, as you start to build up your own code, you'll you'll find that you'll be taking bits of code from pieces of work that you've done in the past and altering them in some way to make a new project or to fit into a new project. And that's why the coding principles are particularly important. So you, you, you want to make your um, components to your system, you want to you wanna make it so that you can, they're not dependent upon huge other chunks of code so that you can take them out and use them in some some other piece of code. You wouldn't actually be taking them out, just making a copy. So I've covered variables. While I'm on the subject of variables, variables have scope. Now scope, this basically means that um, you can have like global variables and you can have local variables. Global variables, in, in very sort of like loose terms, global variables are gonna work anywhere in your program, whereas local variables might be restricted to a particular function or object. You create objects. An object obviously is quite an important concept in coding, especially when like, you know, a lot of the coding languages these days are object orientated. So Java is object orientated. JavaScript is very event driven, even though you can um, use it to write objects and write it in an object orientated way. You can do the same with Python. Um, Java is, is very, very object orientated. And you're going to have a difficult time doing writing in Java any other way. So, PHP, I did mention PHP earlier. PHP, you could use PHP or even JavaScript to generate pieces of HTML. I've done this several times um, where I've used PHP to, to generate HTML. But more recently, I've been using JavaScript to do that. It is, it's not as easy with PHP, you can just wrap it up and use it that way. With Java uh, script, uh, um, you tend to have to generate this bit and generate that bit. And it, it can be a bit complicated, but you, you, you can do it once you've done it, then you just copy and paste it and make little alterations here and there. Um, right, so I've pretty much, uh, pretty much covered all of the all of the basic ideas there. There was four loops, four loops. You, you, you use a for loop if you know how long something is. So I, I mentioned lists earlier. If you got a, a list, you would say for as long as that list, do this. You know, so if the list is, is 10 long, 10 items long, then it will go through that loop 10 times until it gets to the end. If you don't know how long this list is gonna be, then you would use something like while, while something is true. So you, you have uh, um, things like Boolean statements. Um, I love coding, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if you can notice, but I absolutely love coding. I really, really enjoy it. I enjoy it. I love the whole computing thing altogether. So anyway, we're having Bodian statements. True or false. You know, um, if something is true, do this. If something is false, do that. So you get into, you can get into like if statements, you know. So you have if something is true, run this piece of code. Or if something is false, run this piece of code. You can have something like, if something is not true, run this piece of code. Else, do this. So you can have like blocks of if statements and you will start to see coding blocks. Um, 
if you're any good anyway, which you will be. Yeah. If you have these blocks of code, you could have like if, 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 if that's what the code is requiring for you to solve a problem, because basically your code, your coding program is going to be about solving some real world problem. That's why you would do it. That's why you have to sit and think about what coding language you're going to use. You know, what coding language would be best to solve this real world problem. And then you might go over uh, um, your your language, uh, your, your coding again, uh, to refine it, to, to change little things here and there. You could spend too much time on that. You really want to get it right first time. Uh, as much as possible. So, I forgot what I was talking about now. So, you could have if, if, if and then you have if else and you might even have if if else if and it can go on like that you can have like switch uh, in java there's this uh, thing called switch where you would have like you know different values for different circumstances you can um have try and catch so you know try something if that doesn't work then you bring up this error report and that that might be necessary if you're gathering stuff from an api and you know if something goes wrong with the api um from from wherever it is being produced from the provider because you would be the consumer in this instance then if it doesn't work for some reason you're gonna want to know why <laughs> You know, you want to know that it's it's them, and it would give an error report saying like, you know, whatever has happened. And again, when there's there's all sorts of headers and code um, that give you an indication of of what has gone wrong or whether something has been a success. But um, I don't want to get into that right now. I just want to introduce you to the idea of coding and using lots of different languages to solve a problem to solve your problem to come up with a solution and if you're just starting out it can be a bit confusing oh, I, I'm this that just learn a little bit of everything just get started get on with the basics and the basics are going to be write a skeleton website with html um, uh, use CSS to, to move a few things around and maybe style a little bit just so you practice and make a few buttons and use JavaScript to give those buttons some functionality and I think that that's a really good place to start. Um, if you're more into the uh, functions then you might want to look at the JavaScript uh, 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 videos or the uh, you might if you if you're more in to the functions um, and the analysis of data you might want to get into the Python a little bit more and have a look at the Python videos that I've got um, the the number crunching you can use things like um, pandas. Uh, um, to analyze data and have a look at data and have nice little little charts and bar charts and scatter graphs and stuff like that. It's loads of fun, you know? Um, especially if you like data. You know, if you like looking at data and analyzing data and statistics and numbers and stuff, then yeah, yeah, I think you'd really like that. Um, but for now, I'm gonna concentrate on the client side. So that's the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript, and that's what we're gonna look at. So I hope that you really enjoy my videos, and I hope that you come back for more, and please do let me know how you're getting on. You know, is this working for you? Is it not working for you? Um, why did you become interested in code? Are you interested in code? Do you have any questions 
If you do, please leave a comment and I will do my very best to answer each and every one of you as quickly as I possibly can. But for now, you have a great day. I really hope you liked my video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and come and check out my channel.